Hello everyone, it is Psych, and I'm feeling particularly chipper on this cloudy Friday morning because it is the first day in what feels like months that I have time to film. I am in my last semester of undergrad and they are making me work for it this semester. So I have been absent for good reason, <laughs> but today I am doing a video in the sustainability realm and it's kind of the five steps that I would recommend taking if you're like ultra beginner on recycling, like just getting into it, you have no idea what you're doing. I hope this can kind of help you conquer that because it's just five really quick, simple steps where you're like going from no knowledge at all to at least being able to take some recycling when you can and be one step closer to being a good steward of the earth, as I like to say. Um, but yeah, before we get into that, of course we have to do the drink of the video. This video, it is the Minute Maid Fruit Punch, which is one of my favorite drinks as a kid. And the other day I got such an intense craving for it, so I went to the store and I got a little carton of it. And it's so good, so nostalgic to me. Yeah, that's solid. So the five steps that I picked out are, um, so first you have to pick a system, like figure out what is gonna work for you. So, you know, do you have curbside pickup in your neighborhood? Do you not? Do you have a recycling center that's nearby? Or, you know, are you gonna have to resort to more unique options like mail-in and things like that? Um, I would recommend if you have a local center to take it to, absolutely take that route because curbside pickup can sometimes be very limiting as to what they accept. I know a lot don't take glass, a lot only take type one plastic. And if you go to a center where you can bring it yourself and sort it yourself, then you can usually recycle basically all types of plastic and glass, aluminum, steel, all of that. So I would recommend that just because it gives you the most breadth as to what you can bring and also it's a little bit better for the environment because you're not having this massive truck have to stall in front of everyone's house and pick up you know their cartons and also a lot of the recycling that gets taken like by curbside actually ends up being thrown away because if you don't know what you can and can't put in a bin they kind of have to toss the whole batch whereas if you sort it yourself and take it you know for a fact okay i'm putting the right thing in this bin these people are going to be able to sort it you know, so it's just a little more reliable. So that's what I would recommend. But that's the first step is like, what resources are available to me locally for me to even get started on this? Okay, the second step, make a place to put it in your home or outside your home. For me, I have this, <laughs> I have this clear plastic tote. It's, you know, um, big. I don't know exactly how many gallons it holds, but it's, you know, just a clear tote, like the packing kind, and I put it in our hallway closet, and it's super easy just whenever you have something that is recyclable, just tossing it in there, because if you don't have a designated place for it, or like you do, but it's kind of out in the open and not nice to look at, it's gonna ugh, always cause you stress and you're not gonna wanna do it. So just set up a good system for yourself to where, okay, I'm, I know where this needs to go and, you know, out of sight, out of mind until it's full and then I can take it and it's just like the trash, you know, if you didn't have a designated place to put trash, you'd be like, oh, this is terrible. Um, so that's what I would recommend. Uh, and then for step three, knowing what can and cannot be recycled with the system that you choose. So if you're doing curbside pickup, get on the website of the company that picks up your recycling every week and see what they do and do not accept. Because it is so much better to throw something away than to put it in recycling when they can't recycle it and then they have to actually throw away the entire batch of things that you want them to recycle because you have bad things like contaminants in the, the recycling batch. So it's, you know, when in doubt, leave it out <laughs> of the recycling. Um, and if you're doing it like at a, you bring it yourself, they usually have very clear, like each bin has, you know, oh, type one through seven plastic and, you know, 
here's where glass goes if they separate the glass by like clear glass and not clear glass like that kind of thing it's always helpful to know and so for instance everything in here is stuff that can be recycled but it also is dependent on the place so for instance this is like your very standard let's see yeah most bottles and plastics will have a little triangle at the bottom that has the number of plastic in it so that's really helpful if you're taking it to the center or deciding whether or not to put it in your bin for curbside pickup is okay say your curbside pickup only takes type one well you can look at the bottom and see what type of plastic it is and know whether or not to leave it out plastic types come through one through seven and they have very funky names that i'm not going to get into um but usually you can sort by number um and then like the most common types are one two and five and then um like type two can either be hard or soft i don't know the science behind it but soft plastic like this is something that you can't usually drop off at recycling centers however grocery stores, any place where you can get like a plastic bag to take your groceries, they are now really moving towards also having a place where you can recycle that type of plastic. Because if they're offering to put that type of plastic out there into the world, they're, you know, as people are trying to promote more green living, they're also now having a place where you can come back and recycle that type of plastic. But it's not just plastic grocery bags. You can bring film type plastic like that. Another thing that usually can't be recycled at recycling centers or curbside is foam. But same thing, since grocery stores are a big producer of egg cartons such as this, they will almost always let you recycle foam. Once again, not just egg cartons, but you know, foam to go cups, foam takeout boxes, that sort of thing, meat trays, like when you get the beef in the tray. So good to know, you know, what grocery stores accept, what recycling centers accept, so that before you even put it in here, you know that it has somewhere that it can go, or if not, you can just throw it away. So then step four, sort as you go or before you go. Clearly, I have not done sort as I go. This, this is a mess. But before, like this is for mostly if you're taking it to the recycling center yourself, which I would recommend, you know, sort as you go but before you go really so for instance here i have you know i have cardboard i have mm, plastic i have glass i have paper I have everything um, but i'm not just gonna bring it like this to the center because a i would be you know taking up way too much time but also there's a stronger chance that when i get there i'm miss throwing things into different bins and that's basically the same thing as putting something that's non-recyclable in a bin so that's what I'm gonna do here in a second, is go through and sort this and as unique cases come up, like things that, oh, here's a, a little tidbit that you might need to know on how to recycle it, then we can talk about it, okay? Okay, so I'm gonna start sorting. Um, and for most of it, I'll probably time lapse, but for the things that I think are key and things that would be potentially confusing for people, I'll stop and explain. So, starting off strong carton remove the lid basically with anything with a lid like this these lids are type 2 plastic I'm trying to see in there if it has the triangle it does not have the triangle but lids are type 2 so you want to separate those because they'll go with their own but this is cardboard paperboard whatever you want to call it anything like this is going to be able to be recycled with the cardboard cardboard like this you want to flatten so now that it's flat you can fold it up because clean, flattened, not torn apart. I mean, like obviously there can be little rips, but you don't want cardboard scraps going in there because they won't take that. Yeah. 
So here we have feta cheese, one of my faves. Anyways, <laughs> I think... Oh, never mind. I was gonna say, I think the top and bottom are different types of plastic, but they're not, they're the same. So, and these are type five. So here's glass with a metal lid. So both of these things are recyclable, but you do want to separate them. So put the glass on its own and then the lid with the metal. So we have a raspberry container here. And as we can see, it's got this little foam piece in it. That's something you'll need to remove before putting it in the recycling bin. So in this case, these are in a type one container, but the lid is type four. Where I take my recycling, they actually don't accept type four. So I'm gonna have to throw this away. Bummer, but it happens. Here again, we have some filmy soft plastic this is going to be taken to the grocery store separate from all of the things that were taken to the recycling center. Okay, so now we are done sorting. The bin is empty. And that was a few weeks of recyclables. Um, it, it takes a while. I have three roommates. It takes a while for us to accumulate that much recycling. Um, it's been worse before, where it's taken even longer. But for the most part, um, that's average for about two to three weeks. Of course, as someone who's trying to live sustainably, I try to produce even as few recyclables as possible, just generating as little waste as I can, but it happens, especially, like, a lot of it comes from produce packaging, and, you know, I don't live in a place where there's, like, a great organic store or farmer's market or anything, so unfortunately I have to get a lot of my produce in type 1 plastic, which is right here, and then we have aluminum with, like, the cans, um, glass over here, all the type 2 lids, and I just want to confirm that these are type 2. Some of them don't have it, but... And where you... Yeah, so, type 2. Where you take your recycling might depend. Some centers might ask that you leave the cap on. Where I take mine, they ask that you remove it and do it separately. So this is the thing, it's like, these are five general tips, which we haven't even gotten to step five yet. Step five is taking all of this and actually getting it where it needs to go. Um, which, now that I've sorted it, that's a breeze. I'm just gonna put it in a semi-organized way in my car, take it to the center, recycle it, and then boom, we get to start all over. Um, it really is not a super time-consuming process. I mean, I recorded this whole sorting process and it took me seven minutes. Um, and that's, you know, with a two to three weeks worth of recycling, that's not terrible. Um, so, you know, there are some nuances. And then, of course, I'll have to stop by the grocery store to drop off the foam and the plastic film. If I don't have very much of those items by the end of the week, I'll hold that off. I'll hold that off for a different trip. But, um, another thing I did that I didn't show on screen was the separating of office paper. So, you know, printer paper or paper from a notebook from, like, junk mail paper, um, <laughs> parties coupons, 
Uh, you know, like any junk mail you get, uh, any mass-produced mail, things like that filmy stuff, magazines, newspaper. You can typically, typically separate those. Office paper will go in its own and then, you know, mixed paper. So like paper bags, um, junk mail, that sort of thing can usually go separate. I'm trying to think if there's any more nuances. We have our type 5 plastic over here. Um, up here you can see, you can't see, but there's all the cardboard. And then I have these water jugs that are type 2 as well. So these will go in the same place as the lids. And yeah, that's all for step 4. Sorting, either as you go, um, you know, something that... Oh, there's something I want to mention. So, with something like this. So... Don't judge me for getting the Great Value Coffee Creamer, but this stuff is actually really good. And if you have a healthier coffee creamer option that actually tastes good, I would love to hear it because right now this is genuinely the best thing I can find. Um, so I would happily take recommendations. But, so with this, this under here is a type 1 plastic and the lid is type 5. So A, these are going to be separate. But on top of that, it says you can't recycle it, but what they don't tell you is you can as long as you cut off the film on top. These are just little things you might not know that I have accumulated over years of trying to improve my recycling process. So you remove that film, now you have a perfectly recyclable bottle. And then, with this, I'm going to eco-brick that. That is something I will have to get into in an entirely separate video because that's kind of a, a detailed process. Um, but once this has been taken off, you can recycle it. So don't always listen to what they say on the packaging. Um, if it is a type of plastic that is recyclable in your area, you can recycle it as long as you remove anything from it that might make it not recyclable. Um, so I'm going to pack all this up and I will see you at the recycling center. So I'm here at the recycling center. Um, I'm going to give you a quick little view of what you can see when you go to drop things off and then try to get some clips of me sorting it, but there are people coming in and out so I don't want to film anybody and make them uncomfortable obviously, but yeah. So as you can see, there's all the different types of plastic and cardboard and glass and paper, and then also more cardboard places to put it over there. So here I am just sorting out the cardboard and putting it in the bin it goes in. I wasn't able to capture any of the other sorting that I did just because there were people around and I obviously didn't want to film them, but this is basically what I did for all the other types of recyclables is I just took my bin up there. Oop, <laughs> dropped it. Oops. Um, I took my bin up there and I put the stuff in the appropriate pile or bin or bucket or whatever and then went on my way. Here we have the grocery store recycling set up. Once again, there was grocery shoppers walking around so I wasn't going to make a scene, but I did want to grab this very high quality photo of the little receptacles for, you can see they have plastic, foam, and paper. I put my soft plastics in those bins and then my egg cartons in the foam bins. But yeah, they have tend to have really laid out pictures of what you can and can't put in there. And that was just at one of my local grocery stores, so it might look different depending on where you are, but generally this is what it looks like. So that is really all for today. Um, I'm going to attach some resources and links in the description to further help, you know, fill any information gaps there might be because, once again, a lot of this is very location specific. Um, but other than that, I really hope this was helpful. I hope this maybe inspired you to start recycling if you don't already, or maybe made it seem a little less daunting if you have been wanting to get started, but, you know, or like, I don't even know what I can and can't do, and, you know, so hopefully this was entertaining, inspiring, etc. Um, but until then, I will see you next time.